Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Man, we've got a we've got a good crowd here today. It's good to see all of y'all here this morning. If y'all would please stand. We're gonna be singing a very familiar song, one that we've done here at Friendship a lot. But I really want you today to really listen to the words of the verses of this song. Listen, because the second verse especially, it says, I've seen many searching for answers to questions far and wide. Don't we all have questions right now? Don't we all have questions, especially this time and this, and this season that we're in? So you listen to these words as we sing and sing along with us. Please. 
Once again, I want to welcome y'all to uh, Friendship Baptist Church. If you are a visitor here, you are certainly welcome. We certainly do appreciate you coming in and just feel right at home here while you're here. Um, just a few things, a few announcements to um, remind y'all of. Of course, remember all the prayer requests that are on our board and in the bulletin. And again, if you want to pick up a bulletin, Jessica does a great job putting these together. They're in the back in the foyer. They're in the back here um, in the hallway. And so please pick them up, and it'll keep you informed on what's going on and what's all coming up here at the church. Um, just to remind you all, we have the ministry fair today, right after church, just like we did last Sunday. Uh, the booths will be set up right after church outside, and so y'all can look around and walk around and see what different ministries we have here at Friendship. And if you are feeling led, or if you feel that the Lord is leading you to be more involved here in the church, but you don't really know where or what you need to be involved with, this would be a great time to see what we've got going on here at the church. And it went really well last week. We had a great attendance, and so come and join us for that after the service. Uh, next, yes. All right, yes, so we'll have the High Tower Food Bank. Uh, we'll have uh, representatives from there set up in the back as well and you can talk with them and get to know more about this amazing ministry that's really just right down the road from this church so um, next Wednesday just to remind y'all we've got back to you back to youth uh, Wednesday starting back up again we've got the classes starting back up and that'll be at 5 30 you definitely don't want to miss it uh, we have a good time and it's uh, for all ages and so come out and worship with us and it'll be great uh, next Sunday, we've got Sunday School Promotion Sunday, so any of y'all that are moving on up into the next classes, that'll be next Sunday, so make sure you're here so you can be promoted. <laughs> and then Thursday, September the 9th at 12 o'clock at noon will be Super Seniors. Super Seniors will be here at Friendship on Thursday, September the 9th, and there will be spaghetti. Ooh, spaghetti. Who doesn't like spaghetti? So... <laughs> But if you're one that doesn't like spaghetti, there'll be stuff for here, here for you to eat as well. So come on out, come on out, and they have a good time. I know I've got, uh, I've had the pleasure of getting to be at um, a few of them myself over the years, and I know they have a really good time, and they know how to worship together and how to fellowship together. So that'll be Thursday, September the 9th at 12 p.m. here at the church. And um, quick announcement to all deacons that are here, all present deacons that are here, if you will, after the service, we're going to meet for about 10 minutes in Ben Shipley's classroom, so if you will stay behind after the service for about 10 minutes, we're going to be back in Ben Shipley's classroom, and I believe that's it. All right, don't forget, we've got tithes and offerings coming up. If those of y'all who are um, giving out the um, offering, please come forward now. And we still have the online as well if you wish to give online. So thank y'all. And I'm going to ask Jamie, will you lead us in prayer? Y'all all stand again. sing with us. This is another familiar song. This is Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance.
sing that chorus one more time. This is my story. This is my song. quaked before moved by the sound of his voice seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard and through it all
Even when my eyes can't see and This mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the mist of the sea
nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you.
Good morning. morning. Isn't it good to be in the house of God today? We are so, so very blessed and so thankful that God has given us another opportunity to come out and worship Him. And today is a special day, and I always love this part of my job as a pastor. We have a new little one here for the very first time. And... uh, I know Herbert and Judy are not excited one bit, and Phil and Renee is not excited one bit, but uh, they're all here today, and so, uh, Cole, y'all come on up, Uh, Phil, Renee, y'all can come with them, and certainly, Big Brother Jeremiah, you need to come too, and Herbert and Judy, you can come too if you want to, that's all right. Thank you. Y'all are so good. (laughs) All right, awesome. This is little Kayla Harper. Westray. Layla. What did I say? Kayla. Layla Harper Westray. Good grace. She, look, she did open her eyes. Look at that. Isn't that precious? What do you think, Jeremiah? Is she a keeper? You think so? Okay. All right. Now, uh, the church always presents a Bible, and as you can see, the Bible probably weighs more than she does right now. But you can still take it and read it to her. That'll be all right. And we have this little blanket. Doesn't that look like a little girl's blanket to y'all? Isn't that pretty? Look at that. So on behalf of Friendship Baptist Church, we welcome little Layla Harper. Congratulations. I'll let mom hold this. And let's give them a hand. Congratulations. Isn't it wonderful? (laughs) awesome awesome if you'll turn with me to the book of first corinthians chapter 9 we're going to look at some verses in chapter 9 beginning with verse 19 and uh, i appreciate uh, trey last week and uh, preaching for us and and uh, as the family and I were down uh, in Florida for a few days and uh, had a good time, and I will go ahead and tell you that uh, uh, I am itching this morning because um, I got sunburned. And you know how sunburn is when it starts healing up, you know, and then you start scaling like a, you know, like a snake, you know, you, you're losing that layer and all that good stuff. And uh, so anyway, I don't tan, I just sunburn. But uh, even if I put on... 50 SPF sunscreen, I still sunburn. So anyway, but we had a good time and uh, just a good week and the weather cooperated with us. And uh, so uh, thank you for, for carrying on. I understand last week was a, a good week and, and heard good things about that. Uh, thank you today. Um, back row Baptist back there and uh, Paul and Angie and we, we've got a lot of good memories of them back in John Clark's baseball days and Paul was was always John Cart's head coach for years. He was John Cart's head coach, and 
and I was the dugout dad, and uh, we had a lot of good times with them two together, and we appreciate Kevin, and, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on your wife's name. I'm sorry. So uh, anyway, thank you for being here so much. And Kevin runs our food bank now for most of you. Kevin, stand up where everybody can see you. Th this is our, he runs our High Tire Association Food and Clothing Bank. We know that is some more job, and uh, we appreciate the work that he does, and Paul and Angie and, and all of y'all for, for what you do. And we have a lot of folks here from uh, Friendship that go on a regular basis and volunteer at the Food and Clothing Bank. And let me go ahead and throw this pitch out there. If you've never done it, um, you really ought to give it a try because you will totally be blessed if you go over there and, and just, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. It's one week out of the month, and then there's, there's things that goes on during the week that I'm quite sure that Kevin would love to have you come over and, and help sort and, and stock and do things like that. And so you can, you'll have an opportunity right after service to talk to him uh, about that very thing. And uh, it'd be a good way for you to get involved. And, and, you know, if you're not, I know everybody's not social butterflies and everybody's not people, people. You know, they don't, they, you know, they just assume kind of be to their self and do their own thing. There's opportunities for you to do that at the Food and Clothing Bank. You don't even have to really be around a lot of people. You can just kind of do your thing. So you'll have an opportunity to talk to them about that at the end of the service. All right, let's dive in. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning with verse 19. Paul talking to the church in Corinth here. As I have said before, when I talk about Corinth, Corinth was a church much like our church today. Corinth was a church that had problems. Does, has anybody ever known of a church that had problems? Any, everybody, anybody ever known of a church that had issues? Why, absolutely. If you've ever been a member of a church anywhere, you know that churches have problems. They have issues. Corinth was no different, but uh, Corinth was a church certainly that Paul loved. It was a church that he... Uh, that he thought a lot about. And, and what he's going to try to get across to them here is, is there's certain things, there's certain responsibilities that a church has. Michelle, in our Sunday school lesson this morning, in Miss Michelle's Sunday school class, I've had the privilege of the last several Sundays of being in there with her and, and assisting her in that class, and she does a great job. But, but she told them today that you know God does his part, but there's also expectations of we as God's people of doing our part. And when I say that, I don't mean uh, doing our part in order so we can be saved, but because we are saved, all right? He saves our soul and gives us responsibilities in this world. We have a job to do. We have a work to do. And uh, in some places in the Bible, it speaks of it as putting on the armor of God. And so it, it would uh, kind of portray it as being a soldier in the army of God. We've talked about that before. So there's responsibilities. God always does his part. He's going to. But we do have a responsibility as his people of doing our part. And I can tell you now, there are Christians around the world that are suffering for the cause of Christ. We really don't know what it is in America to suffer for the cause of Christ. But there are people around the world that literally suffer for the cause of Christ. They put their lives on the line. We've heard a lot about Afghanistan as of late. Amen? And we've heard about how the Christians now, how the persecution no doubt will ramp up and it will get much harsher than what it already was. They were already uh, uh, in bad situations, but now it'll be even worse unless God intervenes and something changes. Now, can we affect change here in Friendship Baptist Church for those people all the way on the other side of the ocean in a country called Afghanistan? Do you believe in the power of prayer? If you do, then you can affect change even in Afghanistan. And if you and I as God's people will pray for God's will to be done, that he would intervene in that situation, you know what can happen? Even the hearts of the Taliban can be turned to the Lord Jesus Christ and make a change and become believers in a Savior. You say, well, there's no way that could ever happen. Well, I'm telling you, uh, God used some scoundrels in his word. God used some scoundrels, and we're reading a book that was written by one of them. You say, well, yeah, but Saul was a religious man. Yes, he was, but that's about all it amounted to. He was a religious man in his functions and in his actions and things that he did, but there was no love about him. 
He had a zeal for God, but it was misdirected. And when Saul met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and got saved by the grace of God, and the Lord Jesus came into his life, it completely changed his outlook. It gave him a new direction. It gave him a new focus. And he became one of the greatest preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ that ever walked on the face of the earth. And because of that man, you and I have the book of First. Corinthians that we're going to read from today. Paul knew what it was to suffer for the cause of Christ. He knew what it was on the other side to be giving the persecution because he persecuted the church. He stood by as they stoned Stephen to death. He stood by as others were cast into prison and he condoned it and he accepted it and he took part in it. Uh, yet when he gave his life to Jesus Christ, he totally became sold out for the cause of Christ. And he gave us this wonderful book that he wrote to the book to, to the church in Corinth. So let's see what he says. Uh, my Bible gives this section of verses the little subtitle. It says, Serving All Men. Paul was in it for all men, not just some. Yes, he was known primarily as the apostle to the Gentiles, and yet he was servant to all. He considered himself even, I read a translation just a while ago uh, as I was sitting there and I pulled it up because I wanted to see what it said. And he considered himself a slave of uh, a people. He considered himself a slave of, the Jesus, uh, of Jesus Christ. So listen to what he says beginning with verse 19. For though I am free from all men... Paul says, I don't belong to anyone. I'm free from all men. But listen to what he says. I have made myself a servant to all. And that word servant there can be translated as slave. He said, though I don't belong to anyone as far as mankind is concerned, he said, I've made myself a slave to everyone that I might win the more. You see what his purpose was? His purpose was to win more people. His purpose was for others to come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior just like he did. His purpose was no longer about persecuting Christians. His purpose was all about gaining more Christians and having more people come in to the kingdom of God. So he said, I don't belong to anyone, but I have become a slave to everybody. Why? Because I want more people to know the Savior that I know. What if that was our attitude today? But you know what? In our pridefulness, and we've all got it, uh, we don't like the idea of being a slave or a servant to anybody. Amen? Am I right? I don't like the idea. You know what I like? I like going and sitting down and having a big old prime rib brought out to me and sat down like I did this past week that is so tender you can literally slice it up with a butter knife. And I like people coming around and keeping my tea glass or my water glass full and waiting on me hand and foot. I like to be served, don't you? But what did Paul say? Paul said, I don't belong to anyone but I've made myself a slave to everybody. Why? Because I want them to know Jesus like I know Jesus. Isn't that good stuff today? Aren't we thankful for a man like Paul that could write these words? He knew what it was to be served. He knew what it was to persecute Christians. He knew what it was to try to live the law and keep it as best he could. But yet he put all of that aside and he became a wholeheartedly devoted. He became literally a slave to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how much Jesus meant to the Apostle Paul. How much does he mean to you and I today? Can we say, I don't belong to anyone but I'm willing to make myself a slave to everyone. You know, I, they had the, the little ministry fair. I called it the friendship job fair is what I called it. And they started it last Sunday. We'll have it out here in a few moments. Uh, and I want you to think about something. If you're not serving in some capacity, if you've been wondering where it is that you could get involved, this might be your opportunity to check out what's going on and to get your name involved in whatever the, the ministry might be. Just think about those things. Listen to what Paul says. He says, I'm doing this because I want to win more people. So he said to the Jews, 
And he, and he was a Jew. He talked about a Jew. talked about being a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a Pharisee. That is, he was one of the most religious elite there was in that day. So he said to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. So he said, even though I know I don't have to keep the law to be saved, even though I know my salvation is all in Jesus Christ and him alone, he said, yet still I'm going to do what I need to do to win those who are under the law, who are trying to keep the law. In other words, those who are trying to earn their way to heaven, those who are trying to do enough good works to get there, he said, I'm going to get right alongside them so that I can get Jesus in there and help them to realize just like I had to realize that it's not about the things they are doing it's not about the works they're doing it's not about keeping the law and the traditions and the rituals it's about Jesus Christ and him alone it's about being born again it's about you must be saved it's about the gospel the good news Jesus 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 that was Paul's goal that was Paul's focus so he said, I became as a Jew that I might win the Jews. Those under the law, I became like them so that I might win those that are under the law. Listen to what else he says, to those without law. Now he's not saying, I'm going to jump in the mud hole and water, water around with them. That's not what he's saying. But I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes you and I need to be willing to roll our sleeves up. And we need to be willing to reach around in there and try to get a hold of them and drag them out of that mess and show them the true way, show them the love of Jesus Christ. Because I'm telling you, people today are starved to death for somebody just to love them, Amen. for somebody to make a difference in their lives, for somebody to show them that they care. Paul says those without the law, talking about the Gentiles. He said, those that are without law as without law, not being without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ, he says, that I might win those who are without the law. So I'm going to go and I'm going to make myself available even to those who don't keep the law, even to those who don't see things the way that I see them, because there's a possibility in doing so that I could win them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's not saying I'm going to get out there and get into the sin that they're involved in. That's not what he's saying at all. He's simply saying I'm going to come alongside them and show them the way. Preach to them, teach them, witness to them, share with them. Why? Because Paul said, I don't belong to anybody, but I'm going to be a slave to everybody because I want them to know Jesus like I know Jesus. Is that our attitude today? Do we really want the world to know Jesus like we know Jesus? Are we truly concerned about where they're going to spend eternity? Are we truly concerned about their salvation if they have hope or if they don't? To the weak, he said, I became as weak that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. You say, oh, so Paul's trying to save people. No, Paul's pointing people to Jesus Christ. Amen. When he says that I might all, by, by all means, save some, he's not saying that he's going to save them. What Paul is saying here is that in any way that I can, whatever I need to do to get out there and win people to the Lord Jesus Christ, to point them to the cross of Calvary, to show them that the tomb is empty and that he died and shed his blood so that they could be saved, whatever I need to do, Whatever I need to do for them to come to Jesus and be saved, that's what I'm going to do. You think that Paul ever had to get out of his comfort zone? You think he was comfortable sitting in prison? <laughs> you think he enjoyed having himself chained and coupled with a Roman soldier and watched like a hawk? his every move scrutinized you think he enjoyed that certainly not 
You think he enjoyed those times that he suffered beatings, the times that he was in shipwreck, all those things, mocked, stoned. They stoned him one time, if you'll remember, and left him for dead. You think he enjoyed that? You think that was something he looked forward to? And yet he said, I'll, I, I'll go through anything. I'll do whatever I need to do so that I can win some to Jesus Christ so that by all means they might be saved by the grace of God. He said, I know. He said, the Bible says, you know, uh, talking about you don't muzzle. You, don't, you, know, you know, the Bible speaks of not muzzling the ox. It treads out the grain. He knew that that a minister of the gospel, you know, the, 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 even the, the way the system was set up in the Old Testament, the Levites and the priests were taken care of. The food was provided, at least it was supposed to be. But Paul said, you know what? He said, I'm, I, I'm, I've done it my life. I, I've, I've, I, he was a tent maker, if we read the scriptures correctly, worked with his hands. He said, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. So that people can be saved and come to know Jesus Christ. He said, and this I do, verse 23, this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. I want to partake with you. I want others to know what I know. I want them to experience what I've experienced. I want them to know Jesus in the fullness of his love and forgiveness and grace and mercy I want them to know salvation to the uttermost. <clears throat> and then he gets into something that I find very interesting. <clears throat> he says, do you, not, do you not know that those who run in a race, they all run? But one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Everybody runs in the race, but only one gets the prize. Paul says, play to win. If you're going to run the race, run it like you intend to win. For several years, Paul knows what I'm talking about, coaching Little League. All we ever wanted them boys to do was to play the best that they could play. Give it everything they had. Practice just like you're going to play in the game because you're going to play the game like you practice. If you loafer and goof off in practice, you're going to do it in a game. Play to win. When I helped coach and when I did coach, man, I wanted to win. If you was going to be on the field, man, why not play to win? If you're going to put forth the effort, why not play to win? I never have understood the game of hockey because they get all fired up and excited about a tie. Nobody wins in a tie. It's a tie. I was watching something the other day and, and they scored a goal and man, they was all just jumping up and down and hooping and hollering and they tied three to three and I said, I don't get it. Nobody won. Do y'all? I mean, honestly. Maybe y'all know something I don't. But if we're going to play, play to win. Practice like you want to be a winner. There's not a one of those Olympic athletes that went to the Olympics in Tokyo. Not a one of those Olympians that went there that hadn't trained and prepared themselves probably for years. For that one moment. That one race. That one event. And they brought home the gold. And it didn't just happen overnight. Paul said, everybody runs in the race, but only one's going to win. Run like you want to win. Why don't we practice Christianity like we intend to be winners? Why don't we practice like we want to play the game? You say, oh, Christianity is a game. Listen, I'm using an analogy here, okay? Bear with me. Doctors practice, amen? Why do they call it a practice? Because they're constantly practicing. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. We have to practice this thing called Christianity. And guess what? 
Sometimes we're going to get it right, and sometimes we won't. Paul didn't always get it right. He would tell you. Matter of fact, he does tell us. I'm constantly catching myself, he says, doing things that I ought not do and not doing things that I know I should do. It's a constant struggle, Paul says. But he didn't quit. He didn't give up. I'm going to tell you something. Through all this mess and all this flare-up, you know what I want to do sometimes? I want to crawl under a rock and hide. I just want to get away from it all. I don't want to deal with this no more. I don't want to go through this again. I'm tired of it, aren't you? I don't know what to do. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what to tell you. But I know this. When it's all said and done, I'm a believer and I still win. And if you know Jesus Christ is your Savior, you still win. Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. That means they keep their self self-controlled. They know better than to eat that extra piece of cheesecake. They know better than to do certain things. They know they need more than two hours of sleep to be able to get up and function the next day and do the training that they need to do. He says, everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. He said, they're doing all this training for, to win a crown that's going to perish one day. It's not going to last. But listen to this good news. But we for an imperishable crown. In other words, what we do as believers, he said, is never going to perish. It's going to last for eternity. Isn't that good news? The trophies that you may have on the shelf at home or, or, or the medals that you may win and those gold and silver and bronze medals that those Olympians win, one of these days are going to perish. They're going to be useless. But if they've got Jesus Christ in their heart, guess what? It'll never fade. It'll never go away. It'll get them through eternity. Paul says, therefore I run. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Paul says, I'm running. And there's not any uncertainty. What Paul's getting at here is, I'm running and I'm going to win. Think about it. He said, therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. He says, I'm not a boxer that's got on my boxing gloves and just standing out there swinging at the air. I'm going to punch old Satan in the nose every chance I get. I'm going to lay him out. I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to put him down for the count every chance I get. What I'm doing is for a purpose. I don't belong to anybody, but I'm a slave to everybody because I want people to know him. I want people to know Jesus. I want people to be saved by the grace of God. Do we want to know him? Do we want people to be saved? Then hold on. Hold on. Jerry told us in the devotion this morning, the devil's alive. You better believe it. Don't you let the world deceive you into thinking. Don't, don't you let your Christianity, don't you let your salvation deceive you into thinking. Satan ain't got no control over you. Because he does. But I got good news. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when I say that he that is in the world, Satan is the prince of this world. And Jesus said, greater is he that is in you. That is the spirit of almighty God. That is the Lord Jesus Christ that lives and is set up residence. He has pitched his tent and he has come in to abide in me. And if you've been saved, he's done the same thing for you. And so greater is he that lives in me than that old Satan, that old devil that rules the world. Here's what it takes, and here's where I fail so miserably. 
But I discipline my body, Paul says. I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Paul's saying it is a daily struggle. I have to daily bring my body into subjection. I have to daily discipline my body to do the things that I know I'm supposed to do and not give in to the things of the world. Because when I do, I know I will disqualify myself from the very gospel that I preach to others. Paul wasn't saying that he would lose his salvation. He knew that wasn't possible. But what he's saying here, I believe with all of my heart, is he could lose his influence, and he knew it. He knew it. You know, you know, you know how far away every one of us are from going up here to down here? One bad decision. One mistake. One thing said. One thing done. And we, bam, Paul understood that. He said it's a daily struggle. It's a daily thing. I have to train. I have to, you know, listen, I said athletes train. They train. They work. They train. My boys played football. I hauled them to practices in the mornings before daylight. I picked them up in the evenings after it was dark. And they did that day in and day out and day in and day out. And it's like, oh, my goodness gracious. And now that it's all over and they don't play anymore and I'm sitting at home and I'm thinking, man, I sure do miss that. I wish I could take my boys to football practice workouts again. But it was a necessary thing. If they wanted to play the game and play it right, they had to go to practice. They had to do the things necessary to get the job done. Did they always win? No. No, they didn't. Oftentimes, they lost. But sometimes losing really has nothing to do with how you played the game. You can play a great game and still lose. But I'm talking about a game that you and I, I'm talking about this game of life, this thing that we call life that we're all involved in every day. I got good news for you. As Christians, as believers, the outcome has already been decided. We are winners in Christ Jesus, and nothing can take that away from us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can take away that victory in Jesus. Now that's good news, isn't it? That's the Savior that I serve and trust that you serve as well. Paul said, I'm a slave. He didn't, he, you know, that, it's, a, it's a strong word. And I think it's the Holman Christian Standard Bible that translates the word servant. It, it, it translates it as slave. And it's hard to read that. It's hard. Because slavery drudges up some ugly images for us. But we have to understand the context and the way it's written. In other words, what Paul's getting at is, is that, man, you, it's, we're, it's all in or nothing. It's all in or nothing. I said some time back, God doesn't want part-timers. And oh, the time that I have spent part-time. And I can't ever get that back. It's gone. It's history, as they say. I've become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Is that our attitude today? Is that our attitude? God, I'll give it all to you. I want you to take me wholly and completely. Make me what you want me to be so that I might by all means that you make available to me win someone to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. There's a little wall over there on Wallace Tatum Road in that little metal building. There's a wall over there that has 
signatures on it. You know what those signatures are? Those signatures are people who've gotten saved at the food and clothing bank. And you ought to just take the time to go over there sometime and if Kevin's there, say, Kevin, show me the wall. Go read those names. People that gave their heart to Jesus Christ. There's names on there. One of the last times I went over there and worked in one of the minister stations, I worked with Bill Bass. Anybody here know Bill Bass? And I'm just going to be quite honest with you. Bill Bass was not a preacher. But I would much rather have worked with Bill Bass in one of those minister stations than most of the preachers. And that ain't nothing against them. Because Bill Bass just had a straightforward manner about him. He loved talking about Jesus. And when things got serious, even if it was in Spanish and we knew that they couldn't understand well, he'd say, Ricky, I think things are getting serious. We need to get someone to come interpret. And they would find us an interpreter to come in. And that day, that interpreter came in and things got real serious between a mama and her two children. And those two children prayed and received Christ as their Savior. And we got to see them put their name on the wall. And one day when I get to heaven and I see Bill again, it wouldn't surprise me one bit that when we're all gathered there together to see those two come up and say, you're the reason I'm here. And just throw their arms around old Bill Bass and hold him real close and say, thank you. Thank you for giving it all for me. Thank you for doing what you did so that I could know Jesus like you knew Jesus. Oh, precious memories. Precious memories. Listen to me today, church. It ain't about you. And it ain't about me. And it ain't about this building. And it ain't about these padded pews and this air conditioning, although I like it real good. It ain't about this grand piano or this pulpit or this organ. It ain't about this choir loft. It ain't about these screens that we've got up that we can put scripture on and run our announcements and put the lyrics to the music up there. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. All this other stuff is just the means that God has provided for us to win as many as we can to Jesus Christ. And if we're here for any other reason, then let's just stay home. Let's just stay home. I love you today. I do. I hope some of this has made sense. It did to me. The point is, Paul said, you know what? I don't belong to anyone. He was Jewish by birth, but he said that doesn't, you know, that doesn't mean anything. There's those that don't have the law, the Gentiles, but, you know, that, that doesn't really mean anything. There's people that are weak, weak in faith, weak in body, whatever. But he said, I, you know, I, I'm going I'm I'm to get right there with them. And there's those, no doubt, in his day that thought they knew it all. He said, I'm going to get right there with them too. I'm going to get with them Jews who think the law is it. They think it's the ticket, but I'm going to show them it's not. And I'm going to get with them Gentiles that think they can, you know, figure it out with their pagan gods and all this kind of stuff. I'm going to let them know there's nothing to them. They need to know Jesus. I'm going to get with them that thinks, oh, you ought not to eat this and you ought not to drink that and you ought not to do this, you ought not to do that. And I'm just going to show them, well, what you need is Jesus. And I'm going to do whatever I can to tell people about Jesus. Because I want people to be saved. I want them to be saved. God's given us a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different means of doing what we need to do. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. I told you in the outstart, I, I don't know what to tell you about all of this. I don't understand it. I, I, I don't. I don't. But I still have to believe in my soul deep down that God wants his church to prosper. He wants us to do well. 
He wants people to be saved. Still today, there's hope. There's hope. Paul shared hope, and you and I need to share hope. If you read on, if you read in the book of Corinthians, you'll figure out that they were believers. They, they knew Christ, but somewhere along the way, it had become about them. It had become about them. And Paul's trying to change all that. And somehow or another, I feel like today, the church is dying in many respects because we've let it become about us. And it ain't about us. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about Him. We, we are in a race. We are in a battle. Satan is alive. And he is going up and down and to and fro. And you know what he's doing it for? He is seeking those he might devour. And do you think he passes up a Christian to get to a non-believer? Oh, no, he'll go for the Christian first thing. We need to be aware of that and we need to understand it. Our Christianity does not make us immune to the wiles of the devil and what he has to throw at us. So we need to be wary. We need to be careful. We need to be prayerful, and we need to be always looking for what God would have us to do so that we might by all means save some. Notice that's what he said, save some. He fully understood he wasn't going to reach everybody. Everybody he preached to and talked to and taught was not going to be receptive to his message. As a matter of fact, there were probably a lot more that rejected him than accepted his message. But Paul didn't quit. Paul went all the way. And when I say all the way, he gave his life for the cause of Jesus Christ. He did. He did. Let's stand and, and, and watch your... Y'all are going to sing one? The invitation is this today. I know we've already had folks in the altar. Isn't that wonderful? It wonderful to see folks in the altar and just just feel that freedom to come to the altar if you need to today you can come if you need Jesus as your Savior you can come today and be saved no need if you know that you're lost if you know you need that relationship you, you can go ahead and do something about it right now you don't have to put it off anymore you can just go ahead and take care of that ask Jesus to save you and I promise you, he will. He will. Sing on. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling you. Have you come to the end of yourself?
just a minute. That sounds good, by the way. All right. So we all know we've had these folks for, for a while now. And uh, so they want to come under watch care. Their letters are at True Way Baptist Church. And uh, so they want to come and uh, under the watch care until we can receive their letters from True Way Baptist Church. Correct? Did I say that right? Okay. All right. So... Thank you, Jason. Moving a second that they be received under the watch care until their letters can be received. All in favor of this. Oh, she is smiling at me. My goodness, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Why? That's probably it, Caroline. She's, Caroline says it's because you're funny looking. That's probably it. <laughs> Where was I? Seriously. Okay. We had to move in a second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The ayes have it, motion carried. All right. Uh, <laughs> she did. She just grinned at me. Hey, pretty girl. She's grinning at me again. Look at that. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow. All right. Now, listen to me. Hear me well. I totally understand. Some, you, if you're not, If you're not comfortable coming around and shaking hands, that, that's all right. That's okay. If you want to fist bump or come by and do this right here, that's all right too, okay? If you want to just walk by and smile and wave at them as you go by, that's all right too, okay? Okay, everybody good? All right. So as they, brothers and sisters, continue to sing, let's, Jerry, where you at? <laughs> 